Yarat Simmerman, an alleged auto bust showing the bearer's worn out features. Theatrical property of Yarat Simmerman Theatre. Yarat Simmerman, also known as the Master, is a fictional Czech polymath, created by Ladislav Smolyak, Jiri Sabanek, and Zdenek Sverik. The fictional personality is presented as a universal genius, and one of the greatest Czech playwrights, poets, composers, teachers, travelers, philosophers, inventors, detectives, mathematicians, and sportsmen of the 19th and early 20th century. Playing along with the pretense of his real existence is part of his characterization. Simmerman made his first appearance on a regular radio program Ni Alcoholica Vinarna U Pavka on December 23, 1966. Although the character was originally meant to be just a modest caricature of the Czech people, history, and culture, he became an immensely popular protagonist of modern Czech folklore, and an ersatz national hero. In 2005, Jarrett Simmerman won a public vote to find the greatest Czech. Simmerman is both the major character and the putative author of a great number of books, plays, and films. Jarrett Simmerman Theatre in Zizkov is one of Prague's most frequented theatre houses. The character was invented in 1966 for a regular radio program Ni Alcoholica Vinarna Upevka, set in Upevka. A fictional wine bar in Prague that was presented to listeners as real, but perennially sold out well in advance of recordings. One show featured a guest interview with a musicologist who claimed to have discovered, during a renovation of his cottage, a tranche of documents relating to a forgotten Czech polymath who lived in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Named Jarrett Zimmerman, the first mention of the character. On subsequent shows the joke was extended as more and more documents, detailing other aspects of Zimmerman's life and his theatrical work, were found in an increasing variety of places. Zimmerman's character and, and stories were located in the Austria-Hungary era as a pastiche of Czech nationalism, but also to allow the writers to criticize the contemporary communist regime without detection. As the authors later recalled, the mystification of presenting the new discovery of a forgotten Czech genius was successful. Some listeners recognized it as humorous, some called for punishment for those who tried to deceive people, and others believed the stories. In 1967 Jiri Sabanek, together with Milan Kepelka, Ladislav Smolyak, and Zdenek Sverik, founded the Yarat Zimmerman Theater. The first play, written by Sverik and attributed to Zimmerman slash Sverik, was called Act, and premiered in October 1967. Jiri Sabanek later left the theater and in 1980 founded Salon Simmerman. People from the Yard Simmerman Theater and Salon Simmerman call themselves Simmermanologists, and pretend to be enthusiastic scholars who explore and analyze Simmerman's life and work. The plays all follow a similar format, the first half is a seminar in the style of a communist-era public meeting, with the actors taking turns to come on stage and present their findings. Then a comic dramatization of the topics discussed in the seminar follows in the second half. Salon Simmerman focuses just on lectures supplemented by brief sketches or songs. In total 16 Simmerman plays have been produced. In 1983 Ladislav Smolyak directed the film Yarat Simmerman Lying, Sleeping, a biopic of Simmerman with Zdenek. Sferik in the title role, and in 1984 Smolyak and Sferik made a detective film comedy dissolved and effused. Based on the theater play Vrazda V. Salonim Coupe, the putative author of which was Yarat Simmerman. Additionally, in 1987 the authors made a film An Uncertain Season, a mostly autobiographical bittersweet comedy about the theater's difficulties during the communist normalization era. In this film Simmerman's name is never mentioned and the putative author of the plays is referred to throughout as the master. Simmermanologists have also written several books on Yarat Simmerman. A museum about Yarat Simmerman's inventions was opened in the basement of the Patron Lookout Tower in Prague in 2002. In early 2005, the Czech television started a contest to choose the greatest Czech. By 15th of January it seemed that most of the votes had gone to Yarat Zimmerman. However, CT decided to disqualify Zimmerman, saying that only real people were eligible for the contest, a decision that was strongly criticized by the public. An online petition was launched to keep Zimmerman eligible. The popular support for Zimmerman caused CT to create a special category for fictional characters to recognize Zimmerman's popularity and Czech television also made a documentary about him. However, they did not reinstate him to the main contest. The son of Leopold Zimmerman, a Czech tailor working in Vienna, and Marlene Delinkova, an Austrian actress, Zimmerman was said to have been born in either 1853 or 1859. Of possible Jewish heritage, Zimmerman's name was originally spelt Zimmerman, 
like the German surname Zimmermann, and he changed it later on as a mark of his Czech patriotism. Zimmermann attended Czech and German schools in Vienna, and continued his studies in Prague. Due to the family's poverty, Zimmermann's parents dressed him in second-hand clothes from his sister Luisa, and sent him to a girl's school, hiding his identity from him. When he discovered the truth aged 15, it triggered an identity crisis but is also said to have been the moment when his genius emerged. No pictures of Zimmerman are said to have been found and so his appearance is unknown. As mentioned in his plays, some of Yard Zimmerman's achievements and contributions include, another one of his great inventions was also the internet itself, although without the widespread use of computers. Due to the technologies available at the time he had to rely on telephones. His internet basically consisted of an old circus tent where the maestro arranged the telephone apparatus for various pensioned high school teachers to answer all kinds of questions people asked. The well-known www prefix is well originated here. One of the teacher's name was Weber and since he stuttered, he introduced himself as www. Weber. His achievements in this field go even further, thanks to Mr. Sister, who was responsible for answering biologically themed questions. Sister answered every one by operating with field mice. This is the first recorded use of mouse as a peripheral in computer technology. Pedagog Most of the pedagogical work of Yarat Simmerman is presented in the play V. Setter of Ani Zetredi Tridninai. Simmerman became a teacher in the small Galician village of Struck, as a punishment by court, when it was revealed he could both read and write. A practitioner of his futurism ideology, he also prepared his students for the future practical use of phones, which were being slowly installed throughout the empire at that time. He created in them such a euphoria, that when the first phones arrived, many of his current and former students began throwing whole fortunes into the phones. Calling random numbers, many of them went home from the telephone booths completely penniless and became beggars. He also revolutionized his small-town schooling methods. Knowing that the cohort is bound to forget at least a part of the lecture, his system was based on dividing the lectured subjects into clearly marked forget-me-not and not forget-me-not sections. The former was one-tenth of all the learning volume and was meant to be remembered, while the latter made up the nine-tenths of the given subject and was intended from the start to be forgotten. As a teacher, he was putting his pupils under controlled exposure to stress in order to improve information retention of the germane. Parts of the curriculum he either snapped his whip hard against the floor or removed his wig. This apparently successful method bears his name to this day as the famous Zimmerman's fixation by shock. When students misbehaved, he did not punish them but punished himself instead, his theory was that pupils certainly must love their teacher and therefore would feel remorse if he should suffer. When his students put water into his ink bottle instead of ink, he would not leave his house for a week. His students having had no school then had enough free time to feel sorry for him. Alternately he would refuse to have his cigarette after lunch and stating, Today, after lunch, I will not smoke my cigar. Don't cry. It's your fault. Playwright Yarat Zimmerman is claimed to have authored numerous plays, many of which are said to have been lost. These plays include Pozel Svetla, featuring his own comic vision of the future world where people are all good to each other and so a person may act as a complete heartless monster without any remorse. Another play presented as a work of Zimmerman is Zaskok, which portrays actors of a fictional amateur theater, performing a play that is messed up by a famous and reportedly brilliant. Yet in reality dumb person who cannot forget to say other people's lines and lines from other plays and who cannot even remember the name of his own character. Zimmerman never received great fame as a playwright in his lifetime, often because of his innovatory practices, such as changing the length of the play in several successive performances or presenting new ideas. He is stated to have sent many of his plays to Ladislav Strupoznicki under his name and two pseudonyms, forming such a bundle of rejected works that Strupoznicki recalls they cost him 60 working days. He also encouraged Zimmerman not to write to him and if possible not to write at all. After Zimmerman replied on a familiar note, because they both studied at the same school, Strupoznicki never recovered. One of the plays, also said to be lost, which was a subject of their correspondence, was Kekovna Ripu, a fictional account of an old bohemian legend, which is here said to feature not only the legendary forefather Czech, but also other characters as forefather German, forefather Jew and, in dialogue only, forefather Gypsy, by which Zimmerman wanted to honor all major nationalities living in Bohemia. The play was later redone and its name changed to Kekovna Ripu, in order to motivate people to work at a sugar refinery in Klanovis. Another man, whom Zimmerman is said to have surprised with his works was Jacob Derman, director of the Royal Chamber Theatre in Hogg, 
who, after reading his play Prosnini S. Cannibalum Dufkum is said not to come out of astonishment. Simmerman replied, Dear Mr. Derman, The theatre is here mainly so that the spectator shall be astonished. I am sending you five more plays. Many of Simmerman's unsuccessful plays are reported to be performed by his infamous theatrical group Lepany. Simmerman's theatre still possesses the original properties from the play act, through which the author himself left the stage. Simmermanologists admit that Simmerman has failed to obtain any recognition in this field because his methods were far too ahead of his time. This is also in strong contrast with the fact how brilliantly he helped Anton Chekhov with his play. Simmerman's special acting methods Viker Z. Hor Viker Z. Hor was a sketch used on stage when the audience displayed a certain degree of unrest with the performance. It was a way of leaving the stage quickly and inconspicuously, with minimal to no damage to actors or scene. When the actors, or Simmerman himself sensed the danger, two members of the ensemble started making seemingly irrelevant comments that there's a wind picking up on stage. Calling it Gale from the Mountains, they kept making remarks on the fierce strength of the wind, which was by that point ripping and carrying objects away. When all that remained on scene were the two actors, the lights went off. This was a signal for the duo to announce, that a storm has arrived and whoever in the audience moves will be struck down by lightning. This impression was further supported by the noise of the carriage leaving the theater area, further simulating thunder. After making sure no one will move, the duo ran off the stage, leapt onto their prepared bicycles and began chasing the carriage. Hamlet without Hamlet Zimmerman often had to cope with insufficient ensemble or with sudden getaways of his actors. Therefore, he sometimes had to make substantial adjustments to the plays he wanted to perform, for example he reduced the number of Chekhov's three sisters to just one, or he presented Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves as Ali Baba the Loner. As his masterpiece in this field is considered his Hamlet without Hamlet, where some other characters on stage constantly complain that Hamlet hid himself once again, and they merely use Hamlet's quotations as they presume what would he say if he had been there. However, this version of Hamlet usually did not meet with favor from the audience, and the ensemble had to employ the above-mentioned Viker Z. Hoare to safely leave the scene. Simmerman's Ten Commandments for Novice Actors Simmerman's theatrical company had a significant share of untalented and inexperienced actors. In the lecture preceding the play The Stand-In, a list of Simmerman's Ten Commandments for Novice Actors is presented, after which the commandments are broken one by one throughout the rest of the play. In another version, the seventh command is omitted and another command is listed as the last one. On September 16, 2016, Google celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first play with Yarat Simmerman with a Google Doodle. A subspecies of field mouse from the Czech Republic was named Apodemus Mycrops Simmermani in honor of Simmerman. Thanks for watching.